Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here at KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe. I'm John Furrier with Savannah Peterson, host of theCUBE. Savannah, we've got a great new format here, a panel. Excited concept. for it, John. We, Kelsey Hightower is supposed to be here. Got lost, he's getting jumped by his fans. But two great guests, <laughs> Matt Butcher, Thormion, and Justin Cormack, Docker, both CTO and CEO, respectively. To unpack WebAssembly, also known as Wasm, and get the view on AI. Because you know, this is what we've been trying to get get a hold of. I'm so, excited for this one, this is hot, everyone's talking about yeah. it, <laughs> let's dig in. Matt, welcome back. Last year you launched at KubeCon Detroit. Yep, yep. Welcome back to theCUBE. Yeah, thanks, I'm happy to be here again. Justin, yes, you've been on theCUBE multiple it. times with DockerCon 20, 2021, 22. Yeah. Things are good and I know business is great for Docker, so congratulations. You guys are rolling with WebAssembly, yep. congratulations. Thank you. It's a hot topic. Not, oh yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. Especially here at KubeCon. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah baby. <laughs> yeah. You know, binaries, assembly, I mean, that's the language of love for developers. <laughs> <laughs> right? I that's mean, right, that's right. It's getting steamy in the afternoon so, yeah. on the <laughs> today, here it's we go. sexy topic. We're um, talking martinis, we're talking. <laughs> so what is, so let's unpack it. For the, for, let's get on the record on the video. What is the purpose of WebAssembly Wasm? What is it? What's it do? Why does it exist? What's the North Star? Let's lay that out there so people can actually get a good video definition of the concept. I think, the good place to start is what it was originally built for. Uh, you know, as we as we know, uh, in, as web developers and now cloud developers, JavaScript was the language of the browser. And over time, over the browser's history, you know, we started trying to use other languages like Java, like yeah. ActiveX, uh, and a and compiling things to JavaScript as a way around not having other languages. Right. So things right. like Gmail were was oh. compiled from Java. And, and, and None of them really kind of had the staying power, plus a lot of the things we really valued yeah. about uh, these other programming languages didn't quite carry over in that, uh, yeah. in, in that set of circumstances. So WebAssembly was invented to kind of uh, attempt to, to rethink what it would be like to have multiple languages that could serve inside sort of an assistive role, I think yeah. I'd call it, right? Yeah. With JavaScript in the browser. Uh, and the idea was you could take a bunch of off-the-shelf languages like C, you know, the, 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 the one language that has uh, deep, deep pedigree, <laughs> and Rust, a language That's that at the it. time had been around for, you know, a couple of, of months, I think, when, uh, when WebAssembly was started in 2015. Uh, and the remarkable thing about it was that the, the core team who started working on WebAssembly, uh, they said, we want to do this in the open, we want to do open source reference implementations, we want to have all the browsers supported, and we want to standardize it all up front, because then the industry will just agree, this is the way it ought to work. And it's not a compiler. No, no it's, a, it's a specification for the, the instructions on how to run the cage, but uh, the com it's compiled by, generally by the normal language compiler nowadays, so like if you have used Go, Go just has WebAssembly as a target, you know, you use Rust, it has WebAssembly as a target, so it's built into your normal compiler, and it's just another another way, another thing you can output instead of native code. And what's the benefit for the developer? What's the value to the developer? I mean, this initial value proposition was that you could take what, existing existing libraries. code, yeah. like you had some code to do some image processing, you could just run it in the browser without having to rewrite it in JavaScript, which would be a huge pain because this is like code that you've developed over, over decades. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, we we're trying to get rid of wastage in <laughs> all of the software development, and this was a way to do it. And I think also there were some use cases where writing in a low-level language like Rust or C++ and then compiling it to WebAssembly would help with some of those kind of number crunching types of operations. Yeah. That's where Figma and Adobe really found a lot of use cases. So bottom line is it was a pain in the ass for developers to rewrite code. Okay, that's why the mass adoption on the compiler yeah. side was rampant. Yeah. Easy, makes things easier to integrate and yeah. run code. Yeah. yeah. So and what, what took so long? I, <laughs> <laughs> right, that's good. Well, I mean, it, they, I mean there was a lot of full starts and thing and kind of attempts to do it. There was ASM.js. So like, it was an iterative process, not a just like, 
this is the best idea ever, let's just do it. It was like, we tried this, <laughs> we can still do better. You know, yeah. it's, it's that kind of... It's a good idea, it's hard, let's do it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. yeah. And I think there were three characteristics of WebAssembly that uh, proved to have value outside of the web browser where in its sort of initial environment and we're starting to see it sort of spread out into different ways. Uh, and th those three, I, maybe you have a different list. The three for me are, it has a great security model which is always one of the things we want to make sure we do well, and oftentimes it's one of the last yeah. things we think about. This time it should be one of the first things we think about. <laughs> yes. the, the second one is its performance is just yeah. off the charts. You know, we want uh, fast execution environments because uh, you know, when you look at a website and you down, first load that website, you want it to load right away. Yeah. Well, as you can see, you know, in the cloud world, we're really struggling with those same things. How do we keep speeding things up and how do we get the most out of it? So I think that's the second one. And the third one was this kind of uh, neutrality. Uh, typically, when I compile a C program, I compile it to a specific operating system and a particular architecture. And that means if I build it on you know, a Mac, on you know, the latest, greatest M1, M2 processor, yeah. uh, you can't run it on your Windows box. You have to, somebody has to recompile it and run it there. Yeah. Uh, WebAssembly provided a binary format that could run on all these different devices, really from you know, very specialized, small IoT devices up to you know, the, the big server grade hardware that yeah. we see yeah. in the cloud and elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the right ones run everywhere thing that with the Java, promised but and it worked to some extent with Java but not everywhere like you you know Java in the browser was a thing for a little bit and then went away again yeah. because it didn't have the right security model so again, you got right. this, the first one the security model it has to be the right security model for yeah. for all these different environments and that's hard and we learned a lot you know again over the decades yeah. of working out what the security model had to look like and that's you know why the WebAssembly security model is different and stronger than the yeah, previous Yeah, just to ones. follow up on that real quick, I know Savannah wants to jump in, hey. but the, the, the extensibility question might come up, so I might say, okay, that's great, but what about the security model if it changes? What makes it extensible? Is it standards? What's, what's behind the extensibility? Well, I think part of it is that WebAssembly on its own doesn't specify the external interfaces to the outside world. It just has a, a model where you, you define those when you when you create the application, you know, the, the runtime and the application, and I think that's um, I, I, that's always been the browser model. Like to to build the browser security model, you have you know things you plug in, like you know new standards. That each of the each time you add something, you make sure that you understand the security model of the new thing you're plugging in, and it's hardened. Yeah. You know, so Web GPU came out recently. It's like adding a GPU security model is difficult, so it's taken a long time, yeah. and it's like hard work, but it's like you build these interfaces and the libraries to implement that and then you validate the system as a whole with that with that API and make sure you understand its full behavior. And it doesn't have a sort of generic extensible thing. It doesn't have a really big standard library like Java did. Java you know, had a lot of security issues in the standard library and that was part of the weakness of the Java security model. The standard library was big. WebAssembly is quite small. The spec's small and yeah. easy to understand for the yeah. runtime. And I think, I mean, to, to flip the question on its head, right? If, you, if WebAssembly is sort of like a nice closed little system, and it's really up to the people who use it to say, okay, we're going to allow it to do this little thing now, right? We're going to allow it to go reach out to the internet and grab a resource and pull it in locally. We're going to allow it to read these four files on the file system, but nothing else. And so that kind of inverted security model, the capabilities-based security model where the, where the the control of what it's allowed to do is external to the language itself means that when we start with it, it's very secure. And then as long as we follow the rules and we're wise <laughs> and diligent in the way that in we that build the system, yeah, you yeah. just open it just a little bit and yeah. allow a couple All things through. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a little clam, it's very cute. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and a lot of testing and a, a lot, lot of, of testing. testing yeah. and, uh, Sometimes yeah. it's got a pearl in it. I was, um, I was gonna make a pearl joke, <laughs> beat me to it, Matt, you beat me to it. I love it. Well, so let's, let's dig in there a little bit and Justin, we, we were talking about this in, in our virtual green room here just before. Where, where are we at with Wasm now? What's the lay of the land? I mean, John was joking what took us so long, but we're still pretty early. It is early. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's been a few years. Um, I, I think that we've, we've actually, if you, look at, if you look at what we've done in the last few years, you can see we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest thing, I mean, you did a For blog sure. post about it at the beginning of this year about 
almost every language now supports WASM, or you know, or is about to support WASM yeah. as a compilation target, and that was. That was really difficult before. It was like, well, you can use WASM as long as you uh, write all your programs in Rust um, or right, C. Right, right. And yeah. it was like, Any, anything else, uh, you're out of luck. And it's sort of the old Model T thing. <laughs> yeah. you, you can have a Ford in any color you want as long as it's black. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. But we're, we're, we're past that. So now, like, the, the compilation target side of things is settling down. There's still yeah. work to do. Um, and there's new features in WebAssembly to support new things, like um, being added and things like that slowly. But the basic thing of like, I can write a program, I can find a compiler for it, and I can compile it to WebAssembly works, which is like really what you need to enable the developer to get started. Yeah. So that that really feels like it's got somewhere over yeah. the last few years. Yeah, and I think part of the newness, part of the reason it feels new uh, is the same reason we kind of saw Java feel new when it was really a few years old, and Ruby feel new when it was 10 years old. You need these kind of technologies, we write them for specific cases, and sometimes we're right, and we do a great yeah. job on it, and other times we're just totally wrong. And you know, Java was originally written to run in very small devices. It was an embedded language. Uh, I, that's probably its least utilized <laughs> use case at this point. Uh, that's but definitely it, not it, what I associated with it. Oh, no, right, no, it that. found yeah. its niche outside, and yeah. Ruby well, was it found, it found multiple niches as well because it's yeah. uh, Android right. was one of them, and, oh, the, and yeah. the enterprise sure. was another, yeah, which yeah, are just very different as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 yeah, and Ruby was kind of the same. It was a scripting language to orchestrate Unixy things, and then Rails came along. Ruby on Rails came along, and suddenly and every web along. developer and Chef, yeah, yeah. I mean, totally, again, totally and suddenly different. every developer. <laughs> that was doing anything on the web or doing anything in sort of orchestration uh, had to know these languages. Yeah. And I think that's what's going on with WebAssembly is it started out yeah. you know, trying to tackle a problem. It, it has found some traction. Yeah. There, there are a number of popular websites like we talked about Figma and Adobe that use it. Yeah. But now, and, and this is where Justin and I get really interested in it, we're starting to see applications of this technology elsewhere where we kind of lift out the WebAssembly runtime from the browser and plop it in Docker and mm -hmm. can execute WebAssembly yeah. there. And we yeah. plop it in you know, Fermion and we, we execute WebAssembly there. Or, you, or you plop it in Nginx or Istio yeah. and like other yeah. places like. Or databases. Well, I this mean, is where I think it's compelling. This is why I want, we'll get to the AI thing later, but this is where, it's, you mentioned browser, but browser is a browser. It's yeah. not a mobile app. They have right. mobile browsers and you got AI yeah. apps coming. The, mod, the application frameworks are growing significantly. Open source is growing. So there's now new capabilities. Yeah. What are they? What's the, the sweet spots? What do you guys see the value? What do you see as areas that are going to be opportunities for Wasm to grow with developers? That's not just... In, yeah. Browser specific. I've, I've kind of got my four, and you've probably okay. got a different set. I mean, browser is the obvious one. Yep. Uh, we talked about yeah. that already. I think IoT is another one where you're dealing with mobile very browser small too. I, yeah, mobile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasm is supported in all browsers, oh. mobile and and desktop. It's a, you know, that was part of the importance of it being a universal platform and, okay. and supporting that. So it's, it's, yeah, probably it's, every device on this table already has Wasm support yeah. in it. Uh, Great. That's that's kind of how quickly it's moved out there under the radar. Uh, so, and I think IoT will be a big application. Yeah. I think um, uh, we kind of jokingly call it the last plug-in model you'll ever need because it is a great yeah. technology to plug into existing systems and, and allow developers to and, extend and, them. And, and plugins is an area that like people don't think about much because it's a kind of weird thing. It doesn't really have a very big ecosystem, but it is really important. And um, you know, it's sure. why it's is it the, important? It, it's the basis of you know, it's a. It's a there's always, when you're trying to build a platform, you need an extensibility model for like, how do I do new things that the platform hasn't thought of for me? Yeah. And that's usually some form of you know, embedded programming, embedded scripting, um, you know, all sorts of, I mean like, you know, Salesforce, for example. Yeah. That's a, it's a big scripting platform, basically. It's like yep. these things are huge, and platform, you just ignore maybe them. tool. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't want to go there. Gonna... I was going to say, are we really going down there? <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Oh, stop. Yeah. No, stop. No, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to redirect. I'm like yeah, a bumper yeah. over here. Sorry, it's going to keep us in the lane. Kind of came out, which is rare for me. Um, no, but but under the, is, the, is is there a middle layer kind of underneath the apps, the browser? You mentioned containers is a hot area, so. Where does it fit into all this growth here as you start, people start moving off, say, you know, virtual machines, bare metal apps to cloud native? Yeah, and that's where I'm most excited about it, is I think with WebAssembly, the kind of fourth use case, and the one that Fermion is most passionate about, I think the same one that Docker is most passionate about, is that we can use 
the WebAssembly runtime as a lightweight, very portable execution environment that complements the existing virtual machine and container ecosystem. But because it's got that strong security model and ultra fast startup time and cross language, cross platform, cross architecture story with it, it means we can build uh, some of the things that have really been sort of a struggle for us to build in the past, do really well in the like past. Like what? What's An example of that is uh, serverless. I mean, if, when we think about serverless, a couple years ago it was all the hype, but it didn't quite live up to the hype. We didn't figure out how to and solve it, some of the difficult problems. So it started to kind of downtrend a little <laughs> bit. And, and then we looked at it and we said, well, okay, some of the problems we were seeing is there's a, there's a mismatch between the architecture underneath and the kinds yeah. of applications we're trying to write. WebAssembly is a better architecture to sit underneath that and be able to start things just you know, you know, with supersonic it, speed and it, just yeah, I mean, if you, very if you, quickly. If you, if you kind of look on Stack Overflow about the kinds of problems people have with serverless platforms, a lot of it's about cold start time, keeping my app warm, yep. all this kind of... Yep. There, and a, vendor lock-in too. It, that, that as well, yeah, but I, I think that like, People are spending time managing things about the platform rather than things yeah. about their application. They they want to just write their application and have it magically work, and yeah. it's not quite that. Right, yeah. This has been one of the down the side effects of successful DevOps. Mm -hmm. It starts operating, and then you got to start managing that op a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and this is where potential AI comes in or other things. So how do you guys see that nurturing of the infrastructure? I mean, basically you got to nurture your app. Right. I mean, yeah. take care of your app by, not paying attention to the things that you just need to run. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're basically saying. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, there's a, you know, there's a big overhead with applications about running it and the infrastructure you need and the code you need and the configuration you need and, you know, it's, it's been, you know, it's been liberating that we've had these platforms that we can do this and we can build cloud native things, but. There's a lot of complexity, there's a lot of time and a lot of effort that people are having to, do, to deal with these, you know. All right, bottom problems. line as we wrap up the WASM portion, what's the, what is the north, what is the outcome going to look like for developers? Go shoot the arrow forward five years. In your mind's eye, if you had the pixie dust, the magic wand, what would you hope to have happen? We'll start, we'll start with, go ahead. <laughs> I'll start with you. Fake, fake left, uh, yeah. No, for me, I think what we are most excited about is I think that this is going to redefine some of the layers of the cloud. It's going to allow us to build the kind of serverless functions we've wanted to build for a long time and the serverless apps we've wanted to build for a long time. But it's going to do it in a way where, uh, first of all, you know, I hit on vendor lock-in just for a second there. That's one thing we want to avoid. We also want integration with uh, Kubernetes, with Docker, with virtual machines. And so I think what we're going to see is a move toward a simpler developer model in this serverless functions way, uh, and, and a move that also complements sort of the operational model that has become popular now. Right, so the way I kind of think about it is, the pendulum swung many years ago very hard in the developer side, and we had Heroku and things like that. Swung all the way over to the operations side where the developer was suddenly like, I don't understand any of this, but the operator really liked it. Now we're trying to sort of reset it in the middle where we can say the developer concerns are here, WebAssembly does this nice job of wrapping all of that right up, and the operator still has all the flexibility on their side to build the kind of applications that they love building with tooling like Kubernetes, or even if we rewind back, you know, Puppet and Chef and, and tooling like that. So similar tool base, easier to code. Yeah, yeah, it makes the developer story much easier, but still gives Everybody's the platform happy. engineer the kind of control that they really want and need. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's right, happy. Yeah. Everybody's happy, love that I mean, for I, our future. I, I, I think that, the, that enabling developers to just write applications that can really run in all sorts of places and use the same code in a lot of places and, you know, recut so your app, depending on whether you want to run it, uh, parts of it in the cloud, parts of it in the browser, yep. parts of it yeah. on serverless, like this. This, is, this you gives are. you the flexibility to, re to structure your app. I think we're seeing, you know, with microservices, we're seeing that it's a very different kind of operating model than it used yeah. to be with monoliths where your app would run mm -hmm. and sit on a mainframe or you know, in a big data center. Yeah. Now, parts of your app are running on the edge, parts of it are running in the browser, parts of it are running in the microservices. Like, you've got this flexibility to put things where they need to be, recut them, move them around for yeah. performance reasons, for um, latency reasons, you know, for ease of development and shipping reasons, yeah. for ease of update, like all these, 
all these things give you these options, but if you have to have a different technology for all these different things, it's really it's a cluster. Bad. And not, yeah. no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe intended. Well done there, well done. <laughs> yeah. well, and the market, the market is ready as a tailwind for cloud native, so much more growth. Look yeah. at just the, the migration from old tech to kind of cloud native, it's still a lot to go, go on. Oh yeah, and I mean, it, it's, it, it always comes down to the same things. We want to do more faster and with less complexity with high security. Yep. Yeah. And, yep. and it seems like and that's cheaper, what we're driving. And cheaper, also yeah. cheaper. I mean, obviously, <laughs> and cost optimized yeah. as well as everything else, but, but it, it is, it's, it's about that accessibility. I mean, Docker's been a platform that's been making yeah. a lot yeah. accessible for people forever. And forever, at least for my forever, as far as my <laughs> mind is concerned when it comes to the internet. And I, yeah, I, I just, I, I love it. I, is there anything you guys disagree on? I, I mean, uh, tea and coffee. I, I think. Uh, yeah, tea, that's tea and, and coffee. coffee. Yeah, yeah, but I think you know, there, there's still tea and coffee. It's still it. new, Wasm. It's like, and there's still a lot of different directions it could go in. There's different things that could be important. I think that. We haven't seen, we haven't seen the th yet the thing that makes a million developers say, "I must use Wasm tomorrow," and that you know, and that's the thing that we're still kind of feeling our way around. Except this kind of interview, yeah. maybe this interview will be that. Well, the compiler, <laughs> target, the yes, compiler targets is a big table stakes. That's yeah. critical. Oh, absolutely, yeah. number one 100%. baseline. Yeah, that's you know, a absolutely. major achievement. And uh, yeah, and that's 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 why I feel that this, you know. Last year was kind of the first year that Wasm could start yeah. to succeed. Right, right. Because right before that, it was just, we, you know, we looked at it, um, you know, five years ago, I think when Solomon's tweet was there, that was when we were experimenting uh -huh. with yeah, stuff, okay. and it was like, this stuff's early. Like, we, yeah. th you spend all your, you're going to spend all your time building the tools to make the it tools. possible <laughs> and not working out what the, it is. the, the yeah. amazing yeah. bit is. And now it's different. Well, we, you know, really we track all the top 20 languages and their progress toward Wasm. Yeah. And at cool. this point, 17 of the sense. top 20 have, have Wasm done or are significantly in yeah. flight. So I think to your point, yeah. we in, from three years ago to now, we've seen wow. the tipping point. Yeah, you're going to need that next figment to say, okay, I could do that yeah. fast. And then yeah. I get it. Yeah. It's gonna, I think it's going to be the bit will flip. Uh -huh. And then I think the tsunami of the, the yeah. migration of developers to it. Yeah. Once they see that everything's tightened up. It, well, in my optimistic take, it's flipping now. What do yeah. you think? Yeah. Now, I, I, year, I, two years? Turn me on once Last that. week? <laughs> I, I, it's, it's flipped right now on the queue, right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Now. there we go. This, 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 this was the moment. <laughs> but no, I think there's definitely, like the trajectory is up and to the right. The, wow. the amount of interest at KubeCon, like in Detroit and here, yeah. is just like, yeah. This is Super where exciting. the... It's one of those moments where it's about time, it's here, it's real, it's getting real every day. Yeah. Compilers are there, targets are there, reusing code, then the flywheel kicks in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Guys, this is a master class. I know, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> WebAssembly I learned as much as I cracked jokes. Thanks so much Thanks, for unpacking that. We'll be back with another panel on AI right after this. We're going to unpack it all. Stay with us, theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Savannah. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.